Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I am excited to try a different video format for today, which is going to be a short video where we think about opening strategy for free people and shadow. And basically my idea is I'm going to roll the action dice, draw cards, and we're just going to discuss sort of what, what strategies we might employ for free people and what we might consider for shadow. And I hope to maybe have a series of these. If, if people like them, then I may keep doing them. But I think that opening strategy is often constrained by your action dice, but you also often have quite a few choices. So we'll try it and see what happens. So I'll go ahead and roll for free people. And for shadow, I'm going to assume for now that shadow allocates one eye. So, you know, this is obviously a pretty weird role, I would say. Uh, free people got no movement and shadow got a single army movement, but plenty of musters. I'm going to draw the free people cards first and consider what to do. So challenge of the king and guards of the citadel. So obviously against only one eye, I would have preferred getting some more movement. Um, at least I have a little bit, uh, you know, I have these Palantirs. So I, I think probably what I would do as free people, I would start by just passing twice because I don't think there's anything particularly urgent that I'm going to have to do. So yeah, I would, I would pass twice. And then after that, I would play guards of the Citadel because I want to cycle my strategy cards and see what happens. So Let's go ahead and um, maybe we'll we'll alternate taking turns now. I don't know exactly the most interesting way of playing it out. Um, Shadow, let's draw Shadow's cards and see what happened. So Worn with Sorrow and Toil and Corsairs of Umbar. Wow, these are pretty strong cards for Shadow, I think, to start with. Worn with Sorrow and Toil can certainly uh, impact the way the free people play if you get it out early. And... Um, and then Corsairs of Umbar is great. So I'm going to be happy to use these musters. I think as Shadow, this turn is fairly straightforward. I would normally, the only thing that I really have some flexibility on are, is this Palantir. Um, I mean, not necessarily, but assuming free people passes, I think I would start by mustering Isengard. And then assuming they pass again. You know, I can go ahead and get Saruman here. It's not really a problem. So I would get Saruman. And that's pretty straightforward. And then we said that free people would draw cards. So I think that's pretty basic. So they play guards of the Citadel. I won't bother putting out the units, but they draw a card. Okay, Kindred of Glorfindel. So they've cycled into, they happen to cycle into some good reinforcements. Uh, I get to draw even more cards. And then... Um, Shadow here, what are they going to do? I probably, if I were Shadow, I would muster uh, Sauron to war. That feels pretty basic. And then, all right, back to free people. I think I would play Kindred of Glorfindel. And because my regulars are actually more uh, restricted than my elites, I would give them an elite. I don't love putting elites into Rivendell if it never gets attacked because the elven force pool is so light, but I'm very happy at this point with my two additional musters to just keep cycling and use Gandalf's ability. So I get to draw two more cards and I'm happy to see Imrahil of Dol Amroth. And as far as Variador is not, not particularly useful, but maybe. Okay. And then um, for Shadow, you know, the, the crazy thing, Worn with Sorrow and Toil is something I would consider playing turn one, if they move the fellowship, but if they don't move the fellowship, they can just declare again in Rivendell at the start of round one. I don't know as shadow, are they going to give me a ring to move once? Maybe. Um, and potentially just going back to free people. If I didn't have a playable strategy card, I might've been more inclined to use the Palantir on for a ring. And maybe I should have done that if I am going to move as a, um, using a ring just to get a little bit of movement turn one, then maybe it's worth, maybe it's worth using the Palantir for that instead of these army musters for that. 
and doing it a little earlier. So in case Gandalf gets hit, then I can hide with Strider. Um, I don't know. It's not, it's not, it's, yeah, I'm not exactly sure. So anyway, given what has happened so far, if it's Shadow's turn, do we save the Palantir just in case they give me a ring? Um, where are my armies moving? Maybe I draw a card, a strategy card now. I can always play Warren with Sorrow and Toil next turn. It's probably fine. Um, it is nice if you get to get all of the um, companions. Um, yeah, I don't know what I would do here as Shadow. I guess I could use my army movement right away. And I would probably... I would probably go Baradur to Gorgroth and Farhad to Nirharad just to not really reveal anything. This could be Gondor. This still could be going up north. Um, let's say we do that. And maybe if they're going to use a ring, they're going to do it now. Um, so, okay. I will, as free people... Am I going to use a ring right now on turn one? I would love to hear your comments on that. Would you use a ring turn one right here? Um, I can continue to cycle uh, strategy cards with Swords and Ariador. doesn't feel particularly useful. I can also just muster somebody towards war. Um, I don't really know where Shadow is attacking yet. So I like an army movement that gets my units into position in Westham Net and potentially Old Forest Road. But, and my chances of drawing scouts are going up. So I could also just play Immerhill of Dole Amroth now. I think I wait, I think, I think I move. I think I'm going to move right here. And then in case I get revealed, I can hide with Strider. It's low probability, but I think that's what I would do. So I think I will use a ring here. I really, I don't love it, but I would. And Shadow rolls and misses. Okay. And then um, now Shadow is like, great, that was my plan. I will play Warren with Sorrow and Toil here. Um, so that's nice. And then free people, what can they do here? With this army movement, I think. I think with this army movement, I would probably just go to Westham Net. It's nice to wait until, um, until you get the Red Arrow or um, Theoden, so that you can get a more efficient movement from Edoras into Westham Net. But I'm not that likely to roll army musters, so I think I'd rather get into position like this. I'll hold on to Amrahill of Dol Amroth depending on if Corsairs of Umbar are coming. Um, I could also potentially have mustered somebody towards war a little bit, but I think that's the way I would do it. And then as Shadow, what do you do with this last muster? You could start mustering up just like a normal muster into Dol Golder and send people going. Given that I have Corsairs of Umbar, maybe I just get the Southrons and Easterlings toward war. I think that's probably what I would do. And then it will increase my chances of attacking into Dol Amroth before they have Imrahil of Dol Amroth or before they have Cirdan ships. I mean, obviously, I know they have Imrahil of Dol Amroth right now, but um, yep. Yeah. So that's how I would play that turn. Curious to know what you would have done differently. Would you have used the ring? Would you have used the ring on a Palantir or on a Army Muster? Uh, let me know. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, curious to hear what you think of this format. I may do more of these in the future. Thanks.